the planned Breaking 4 event by Nike is fast approaching, scheduled to take place over a three-day window from June 26th to 28th, depending on which day offers the perfect weather conditions. Where Faith Kipyagon will attempt the first sub-four-minute mile by a woman. How fast would she have to run? Will she be wearing some super shoes or a speed suit? Will there be paces and in what formation? These are the questions we're going to attempt to answer in this video. But first, hit that like and subscribe button so you don't miss out the next time we upload something interesting. Now, I've seen some people online calling this a marketing stunt for Nike, which is the same thing they said when Eliud Kipchoge attempted to break the two-hour marathon barrier. So what do you think? Is this just a clever brand campaign, or is it a genuine attempt to push the limits of human potential? Drop your thoughts in the comments. I'd love to hear your take. In fact, anticipation has been building since earlier in 2025, when a Royal Society Open Science study, by some of the same scientists behind Breaking 2, calculated that if everything went perfectly, Kipyagon could crack 359.37. That independent study, didn't involve Nike, envisioned an ideal drafting setup, one pacer just ahead and one just behind Faith for the first half mile, then swapping fresh runners at the halfway point. In that model, they estimate air resistance could be cut by 76%, leading to an eye-popping projected time of 3 minutes, 59.37 seconds. But how fast does she really need to run? To break 4 minutes, she'll need to maintain an average speed of 15 miles per hour, or 24.14 kilometers per hour. For people like me who are used to the metric units, one mile is approximately 1,609 meters long. So if we break that down into 400 meter sections, she needs to run each in under 59.66 seconds. The final 409 meters would need to be run in 61.01 seconds or less to hit a total time of 359.99. And if we divide the mile into four equal parts of about 402.34 meters, roughly quarter mile splits, Kipyagon must clock each in under 60 seconds. This perspective shows the insane consistency demanded by a sub four minute mile. There's virtually no room for error. It's like asking someone to run at their maximum speed a 400 meter race in under 59.66 seconds, and then force them to do that three more times without without reducing the speed at any moment. That's a level of sustained speed most athletes never touch in their entire careers. Maintaining such a fast pace is an impossible physiological challenge. It pushes an athlete to sustain a speed that sits right at or just below their red line for the entire race, so can she really do it? Because online we have seen a number of bloggers saying that she won't be able to break the barrier. So to give herself a fighting chance, Faith Kipyegon has been undergoing some truly insane training. According to sources close to the project and drawing from the study's findings, she's working on building endurance and speed to levels previously unexplored in the women's mile. Despite being a miler, she's reportedly been logging runs up to 40 kilometers to build base endurance. Then she sharpens that with fast intervals, 600 meters, 300 meters, and in one session, she even clocked a blistering 43 seconds in a 300 meter rep. That kind of raw speed, especially in the middle of heavy training, shows just how serious she is. And just maybe, it hints that the four minute wall could finally come down. One of the biggest issues with the mile is that runners tend to slow after the 1,000 meter mark. The final 609 meters are typically where pace drops. And if you look at Kip Yegon's past races, she often finds herself running alone during those final stretches without anyone to pull her along. That's why pacers are going to be used heavily in this attempt. Although we don't yet know the exact pacing strategy for the Breaking 4 event, the study proposed having pacers both in front of and behind her to reduce drag and maintain rhythm. The researchers even suggested two female pacers who could swap mid-race. But the problem with that is it could introduce errors, and in a sub-four attempt, every second counts. That's why there's a good chance that elite male pacers will be used. Men who can maintain or even slightly exceed that 15 miles per hour pace for the full mile. The only problem is, if male pacers or female pacers enter the race midway, the result won't be eligible as an official world record under world athletics rules. But that's not the point here. The point is to show the world that it's possible. As for gear, Nike is reportedly developing a brand new type of shoe specifically for this challenge. While details are being kept under wraps, the company released a statement saying, the Nike Advanced Innovation Team is developing apparel and footwear that function as a cohesive system. Incorporating Faith's feedback to meet her exact specifications necessary for optimal performance and to support her in achieving her courageous goal. 
the brand's press materials make clear that their advanced innovation team is treating this as a complete system, shoes and apparel customized to her feedback. Reports say Nike is developing new carbon-plated super spikes tailored to her stride to help Faith achieve the impossible. There's also speculation that Nike is working on a high-tech speed suit and a cutting-edge sports bra that could provide marginal gains. These, of course, are tiny advantages, but in a race where every tenth of a second matters, marginal gains add up. In short, everything Faith wears will be optimized, from plate and foam shoe tweaks to aerodynamic fabric in her gear. Still, it's worth noting that these tech advances only yield tiny fractions of a percent faster. The bulk of the work must come from Faith's own fitness and determination. Still, none of this, none of the tech, none of the paces, none of the data, will matter if the athlete herself isn't ready. And right now, it seems like Faith Kipyagon is more ready than ever. Nike's live stream is already locked in via YouTube, Instagram, etc. for June 26th about. And fans around the world will be waiting for that historical moment like how West streamed the 159 moment of Eliud Kipchoge. Will Faith Kipyegon make history and break the sub four minute barrier? Or will we witness an amazing attempt that inspires future generations anyway? Hit that like button if you believe sub four is possible, subscribe to follow the build up and definitely comment below. Do you see breaking four as a milestone in the making, a marketing spectacle or something in between? The world will be watching Faith's moonshot. Stay tuned to see if history is made. Champion keeping everybody behind her as they go through with one lap to go at 3.06. And this is where the crowd matters. Let's take these ladies through the final 400 meters of the longest distance we will see tonight. These are the best athletes in the world. We have Faith Kipyegon, the greatest woman to ever run this distance. And she's now nearing the final 200 meters of a 1,500 meters that they've come here to run just for you. And look at them open up their stride now. Half lap to go. Kip Yegon, Welteji, Azure Sanders, Sagai, and McGee and Snowden. And no one's going to catch the Olympic champion. Faith Kip Yegon is Athlos champion. Four oh four seventy nine for Kip Yegon in a tactical race that turned into a sprint <laughs> race at the finish. Well, Ted J will hold on for second as Jore Sanders finishing in third. What a race! Just over four minutes there, but like Robin said. These women are running at a pace that most of us cannot keep for even 10 seconds on a treadmill. And then in the final 100 meters, they're in an all-out sprint to the finish. 58.45 for the final 400 meters there for the greatest woman to ever do it, Faith Kipyegon. And there's a lot of other stages where it is about running the fastest you've ever run before. We've seen her break so many of those world records oh, yeah. here, Sonia. This is another kind of a great classical tactical race, and she covered every move, had the awareness, looked over her shoulder on the inside there, seeing where well Teji was, mm -hmm. but never in doubt. Yeah, after a busy schedule in Paris, she prolonged her season for this moment, and she had to dig deep and come out here to pull off another incredible win. We just see Faith Kipyegon doing Faith Kipyegon things. I, I, I don't know what she has left in store, but I'm just excited that we get to be in these seats watching the greatest woman to ever do it continue to be great. Well, it is a world championship season next year as they will return to Tokyo side of the Olympic Games in a time period right about now. So a year from now, we'll be thinking about those world championships. And if Faith Kipiegon is there, she will be part of that conversation. Final results from Athlos, New York City in the 1500 meters. Faith Kipiegon, the winner. Well, Teji of Ethiopia second. And Kenyan Susan Azure Sanders finishing in third. All right, Paul, thank you so much.